although we've had lots of smaller introductory examples built into the lecture videos for chapter 11, this is our first full example problem from this chapter. And it's actually the only one that isn't a example from the buoyancy force section that's coming up soon. So in this example, we have a scientific instrument here that is trying to figure out the pressure of this unknown gas. And it's using mercury in a glass tube, and we can see the height of the mercury on the left and the right is different. Now the first thing we really want to be thinking is always if we have a sense of what the situation should look like. We draw a picture each chapter to start out with so that we can kind of put ourselves into that situation and try to think if we have any intuition. In this case, the thing we want to think about even before we start writing down equations is when we see the mercury here, lower on the right side and higher on the left side, that tells us something about the gas pressure compared to the air. Kind of think of this as a tug of war, although it's really a push contest. The air is pushing down on this side, the gas is pushing down on this side, and because the air has pushed better, basically, we can tell that the gas pressure is going to be lower than that of air. Overall idea is that the pressure below the lower location is equal to the pressure above plus plus rho g h, where rho is the fluid that we are um, in between the lower point and the higher point. All right, so the pressure below, I want to make it really clear that below means the lower of the two boundaries that I circled here. So the pressure below here is this boundary between the air and the mercury on the side. That's going to be the atmospheric pressure because it's open to the air. The pressure above is this higher height, and that's the gas pressure. So this pressure above is the unknown gas pressure that we're looking for. We're going to solve this problem with two different unit types, and we're going to talk about why the millimeters of mercury unit is different and can be quite quick if we are dealing with a situation that actually involves mercury. Okay, so the first method is the millimeters of mercury, and the periodic table mercury is Hg. In that case, what we really care about, instead of the rho gh term, what we get is the pressure below equals the pressure above plus the height difference in millimeters. And this only works if we have mercury in the tube. So the atmospheric pressure, that's a known value. And I'll uh, make a note of it here. So in general, the atmospheric pressure, we can say is one atmosphere. And in our standard scientific units, that's 101,300 pascals or newtons per square meter. But it is also the case that if we are using millimeters of mercury, an atmosphere, a standard scientific atmosphere, is 760 millimeters of mercury. All right, so the pressure below, the atmospheric pressure, is 760, and this is millimeters of mercury. The pressure above is what we're looking for. That's the pressure of the gas. And then the height difference we were given in millimeters is 35 millimeters, and we're double-checking that it is mercury in the tube. So all we have to do is subtract 35 on both sides, and we get our answer is 725 millimeters of mercury, and that is our pressure of the gas. Now, 
that only works because we had mercury in the tube. In general, if we have anything else going on, so in our standard units, we can still use the same equation, but now we have to actually use the rho GH term in its entirety. So let's see what that looks like. First of all, the pressure below is the atmospheric pressure. We've already talked through that part. So that's Newtons per square meter. And then we have the pressure above. That's our gas pressure that we're trying to solve for. And then that last term, we must use all of the standard units. So the density of the fluid, the density of mercury, is 13,600 kilograms per cubic meter. So that density, 13600. G is the 9.8 that we've been using since chapter 2. And the height would have to be in units of meters. So 35 millimeters, milli, one millimeter means 10 to the minus three meters. And so we get 0 0.035 meters. So we put that in, 0 0.035 meters. All right, I'm gonna scroll down to give myself a little bit more space, but all we're gonna do is multiply these three things together, and then subtract that term from both sides. But we'll give ourselves more space. All right. So when we multiply these together, we get 4,665. So we'll subtract that from both sides. And so on the left, we get 96635. And on the right, we just have the pressure of the gas, and so we have our final answer. Now these numbers look very different from each other, the two boxed final number answers. And we didn't actually have to solve from the beginning to get these two different numbers. What we could have done is done a unit conversion to get from one unit type to the other. And so I'm gonna make sure that we recognize how that would work if I have 725 millimeters of mercury, I can recognize that 760 millimeters of mercury is equal to or equivalent to 101,300 newtons per square meter. When you plug that into your calculator, and it can be worth doing so just on your own to double check, even to five significant digits, we do get the same result that we did from starting from scratch with our standard units. So these are equivalent answers, and this top format works really well as long as we have mercury in the scientific instrument that we're studying here. But that really isn't so common these days, and so we need to make sure that we're able to use the full standard process as well. So hopefully this helps you have a slightly better understanding of how these different units relate to each other. Really, it's the function of if we know that it's mercury in the tube, then we know what the density of mercury is like, and we can use that to build this kind of new method or new um, unit system for pressure specifically. And people talk about that kind of pressure all the time, even if we aren't using mercury in our scientific instruments. And so it's worth making sure we recognize um, what that looks like. So I will see you in more lecture content videos, as well as example problem videos that use the buoyant force. So I will see you in those next examples.